Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go blue and welcome to our Washington Visitors edition of the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. For the first time this season, we hit the road. It's off to Husky Stadium for a primetime night game with Washington. Joining us today will be Elise Woodward, who is the radio sideline reporter on the Washington Huskies radio network. We'll also hear a few of Sharon's thoughts from his Monday presser. Saturday was another stressful game to watch. I think we better get used to it. The tale of two halves of football. We played very well on both sides of the ball in the first, and then the wheels came off in the second half just like last week against USC. Hopefully that is not a trend, because it is not what good football teams do. We've always struggled on West Coast trips, and playing at Husky Stadium is a unique and crazy experience. Beating them in their place will take four quarters of football and improvement in a lot of areas, like throwing the football. We've been able to get away with being a one-dimensional team so far, but that is playing with fire. It's almost the middle of the season, and by now, you sort of know what your team is, what its limitations are. Throwing the ball is our Achilles heel. I'd like to think we can improve that piece of our game, but with each passing week, I do have my doubts. I'm sure you do, too. At his Monday presser, Sharon talked about that passing game. Got to get better. Got to continue to strive to get better. Starts with me and how I organize practice and things we can do to help them. And we'll continue to do that to get better. But Orgy did some really good things and improved. Went through some progressions, which was good to see. Got to continue improving in that aspect. And then, you know, we got to get open for them, too. And we got to protect. So it's a, it's a whole part thing. It's a team, team thing. Sharon thought Alex Orgy did some positive things against Minnesota. The interception, if it's a little to the right, it's not a pick. You know, Colson will tell you he's got to help him, but we got we also probably need to progress on, and you know, we have Donovan down the sideline. So there's, you know, those things are it's football that's going to happen. But he made some steps in, in the right direction, progressing all the way to a backside dig was huge, which we haven't done here in a long time. And uh, so it was good good for him to do that and make a nice access throw to, to the field to Kendrick and uh, do some things around the pocket. So. He's making the steps needed, and we'll continue to push him. In talking about Kalal Mullings, Sharon said he is just one of those players who has great vision. Yeah, I've been blessed to be around some good running backs, and he's got, I mean, his vision's really good. I, I don't, I can't tell you for sure how you, I mean, you can, you can do individual drills to coach different reactions to different things, but I think pure vision of what you have is just God-given, and uh, he has it, and he has an innate ability to will himself into yards. Um, we were talking about it. I mean, there was some block one, and he got four. Some, you know, there's a guy in the backfield. He makes a miss, and he gets first down. He runs over a safety in the hole. So like he's he's unbelievable, and uh, glad he's on our team. From what he's seen on tape, he thinks the Huskies are a really good ball club. I think they're a really good football team. Obviously, it starts with the quarterback on offense. He does a really good job distributing the ball. I don't think he's throwing a pick. Got a lot of yards. The running back's really good too. Sound, sound running back. Can make a miss, can run over you, and on defense, you know, sound defense. It, you know, they're going to challenge you. You're going to play a lot of man coverage, a lot of cover one. So, you know, expect the heavy box. So we got to do some good things on the outside to go win. 
For the last five weeks, we've been saying, this week we'll learn a lot about this Michigan team. You can say it again this week. My guest today says Huskies fans are saying the same thing. Up next is sideline reporter Elise Woodward from the Washington Huskies radio network. So stay with us. Joining us on the Visitor's Edition this week is Elise Woodward, sideline reporter on the Washington Huskies radio network. Elise, great to have you back with us. Yeah, good to be back with you. It's funny, little rematch action going on yeah, <laughs> for the I national mean, championship game, so that's going to be fun. And I, I just saw the, the message a while ago that it's sold out, and uh, they expect a raucous crowd, so it should be really fun. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. I was thinking uh, tonight, uh, eight months ago, you and I got together preview the national championship game but I think it's safe to say uh, neither of these teams is even close to what they were that day are they gosh yeah it'd it'd be fun to compare to see whose team has changed over more uh, over the last eight months of course two brand new coaches and I guess with Michigan you have the the coaching staff has remained largely intact but for Washington it's a completely brand new staff and 21 new starters (laughs) It's uh, it's certainly a brand new feel at Washington. Um, and Jen Fisher did a really nice job of uh, going in the transfer portal and, and, and I think building what is a real respectable squad. I think they've played better in a lot of areas than I expected them to uh, due to all the losses, but they've just shot themselves in the foot in their two losses and they've outgained their opponents and, and they've done some really nice things, but the penalties have absolutely crushed them. And, uh, it's kept them from being 5-0. and oh. oh, absolutely. I mean, it was uh, such a tough loss on Friday night. Very deceiving, as you mentioned, with the statistics. Because if you watched the game, and I did, uh, you saw the Huskies roll up 521 yards of offense to Rutgers 299, but missed three field goals, which I know is way out of character, including the uh, 55-yard attempt as time expired. Just too many mistakes, but in the red zone in particular. Yeah, and the red zone is something that really hurt them in their loss in the Apple Cup versus Washington State as well. It, it's They've proven that they can move the ball consistently. Mm-hmm. They've had a nice balance. Jonah Coleman is an absolute bruiser, and he's got good burst too. Um, their running back who transferred in from Arizona with Jet Fish. And their quarterback, Will Rogers, is coming over from Mississippi State. He throws a really nice ball. He's got 10 touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, His completion percentage is over 70%. So he's been doing a ton of great things. It really, for Washington, there's been two areas that have been crushers. Third down conversions, uh, both offensively and then defensively allowed. Their defense has been very stout, but Rutgers got them on the third down conversions. They they outplayed them in in that one particular area, and it just was a crusher. Uh, And the penalties, untimely brutal 15 yarders um the penalty right before halftime of blocking a field goal having the ball and having time to go down and at least get a field goal or potentially a touchdown and instead the call is reversed because a rambunctious freshman got too excited and ran onto the field to celebrate it's just mind-boggling yeah. it is mind-boggling um you know they had uh, offensive linemen down in the red zone uh, jump on a guy that was already on the ground, 15 yard penalty. And it took, you know, it, they've been drive killers and the penalties were m- much worse against Washington state in that loss. But the penalties at Rutgers were um, as crushing. Um, they weren't as many, but they were just as crushing and, and played as big a part in the game, just the inability to overcome those. And uh, it's, it's been the reason why specifically that they have suffered two losses where they, could have certainly won and maybe should have won, but uh, it goes down as an L in the uh, 
in the final ledger, which is all that matters. Yeah, I have to uh, think Coach uh, Fish is uh, really uh, impressed with uh, Will Rogers. I was uh, watching him play in that receiving core. I mean, it's clearly not the star-studded group we saw in the national championship game, but led by former Wolverine Giles Jackson. He has 34 grabs so far this year. Denzel Boston, 30 catches, 7 touchdowns. Talk about that group and your impressions of them so far, Elise. Yeah, it's pretty incredible when you look at last year's wide receiving core. Yeah. Um, three were all drafted in the top two rounds of yeah. the NFL draft in Jalen McMillan and Roma Dunze and Jalen Polk. And then uh, Jeremy Bernard moving on to Alabama with Kalen DeBoer. He will be playing in the NFL. Uh, Giles Jackson, who's back, and he started the year, he set a record. I think it was 18 targets and 18 catches. Um, and he just looks like he's a senior. He looks confident. He looks um, quick. He's breaking tackles. He's been really good this year as um, not just a guy in the slot, which is, you know, where we've seen him for a long time, but um, he's taken the top off the defense uh, quite a few times this year. Um, So he's having an outstanding start to his senior campaign. Uh, Denzel Boston is a redshirt sophomore that is a big target, six foot four, um, 205, I think, is what he's listed at. And he's got a long reach. He's, um, he's gone up and made contested catches. He's a guy, obviously, in the goal line that, you know, he's a fade route uh, threat with his size. Um, and he's a guy that has potential to play at the next level as well. And his first chance to really get in there uh, with consistent reps, and he's proven that he is capable of being a big-time wide receiver at the Power 5 level. So those guys have been good. They also got a guy that transferred in from Cal, who was one of the Cal Bears leading receivers last year, and Jeremiah Hunter, who has come up with some big third down uh, conversions and uh, is a, a tough wide receiver as well. So they've got a really good wide receiving crew. To, their skill guys are good. Uh, yeah. You put the skill guys for Washington up with um, anybody in the Big Ten, and you know you go there, their running backs are three deep, and all of them uh, can change a game. Certainly Jonah Coleman who was banged up at the end of the Rutgers game and didn't play in the last series, and you wonder what would have happened. Um, It sounds like he's fine. He's going to be good to go, just normal wear and tear of a running back. Um, But Cam Davis coming back as a six-year senior, he's had some really tough carries. And then true freshman who looks like he's about 28 in Adam Muhammad, uh, he's an absolute uh, just crazy physical stature for an 18-year-old kid that has been getting some carries as well. So, um, they've got some threats that can definitely take it to the house, but it's just, it is kind of mind boggling that you know, when they get in that red zone, they get bottled up and they just have had a hard time putting touchdowns on the board instead of field goals or, or getting denied with, you know, the missed field goals and, and, or, you know, the penalties taking them out of uh, scoring opportunities. Yeah. So all things considered after five games, uh, the production numbers, good, both throwing and running the ball. It looks like, as you mentioned, cleaning up the penalties, especially in the red zone, and, and this offense could go places. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that they have proven they can move the football. I, when you look at things and you project, they have been able to pass the ball efficiently. They have been able to run the ball effectively. And they, it has not been a problem in any of the games so far this season. So my big question for Washington this week is because Michigan – will be the best team that they have faced so far this season. Are they going to take the good part, so many good things they can build upon before this Michigan game and, and build on the strengths of the, you know, the yards compiled, or are they going to trip on what's behind them? Are they going to get upset or frustrated that they have those two losses that they could have, should have, would have been five and zero? Are they going to be frustrated and let that hurt them from a mental perspective heading into Michigan. They're at home, which I think is going to help them tremendously. It's going to be a packed house. It's going to be, the fans are going to be fired up. Um, So you would imagine that that's going to help a team as they try to rebound off a really difficult loss um, on the road. Um, And so that I think is to be determined. It's, you know, just the point of, you know, being able to get back up after you've been knocked down and, you know, we don't know. We don't know how they're going to react. It's a brand new team with a bunch of new players. And so I think the real key is just, you know, what their mentality is to come out against the Michigan team that is certainly, um, you know, a really strong rushing team and a good defensive team. And it's going to be physical. 
Um, and will Washington be able to stand up to that? That's the question. Well, so this week, big primetime game in Husky Stadium, a rematch of the national championship game. But as we said at the top, two very different teams right now. Uh, Michigan's first road trip of the year, which makes people real nervous back here. And hopefully the offense shows up. We we don't know. Uh, but it's hard to get a feel for how this game could go right now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is definitely one that I think just the small sample size of just how good each team is. I think there's much to be determined. You know, can Michigan find a way to move the ball through the air, which they haven't been effective as that, or can, does it matter because can Washington stop the run? Uh, it, it, one really big injury that could really hurt Washington is their it was in my opinion their best defensive tackle in Javon Parker or Javon Parker who is a kid from Michigan and he tore his Achilles at Rutgers which was really unfortunate he'd been a great hole plugger um, really tough strong kid uh, that had earned the starting spot this year after doing um, you know getting a lot of reps last year um, as a redshirt freshman. So that is unfortunate. And Washington is going to have to find some guys that can, you know, plug up the middle, especially with the type of, you know, just ground it, pound it style that Michigan wants to bring to Seattle. So that's going to be a major point of emphasis for Washington is finding a way to be tough up front um, against that run game when they're missing um, one of their best D tackles on the right. roster. Well, final question before we let you get away, Elise. Uh, just about everyone you talk to in the Michigan orbit has great things to say about the atmosphere, the scenery, the whole game day experience from you know our past visits out there. It is just a very special game day environment. It's it's very unique, isn't it? You know, I've been lucky enough to be uh, on the sideline for over two decades, and I've been able to see at a lot of great stadiums all over the country. And I don't think there is a prettier place in the professional or the collegiate football world uh, to watch a college football Saturday, any football Sunday. It's all right on the water of Lake Washington. Um, hundreds of boats line up and um, they have a, a taxi service on the water to get you into the game. And you literally walk less than 100 yards to get into the stadium from the lake. Um, and it's supposed to be a gorgeous Saturday probably about 70 degrees is the high, maybe yeah. high 60s. Um, it'll The sun will be setting during the middle of the game. Um, and the crowd is loud. It's one of the loudest stadiums in the nation. Uh, it has the big old overhangs that were built with a specific purpose, and that is to trap that noise. Um, and before they redid the stadium, it's been about 10 years ago, um, the, you know, the press box used to shake. Uh, when this crowd got stomped on, like you literally <laughs> felt like it was an earthquake. And it was kind of scary. Yeah. Um, but uh, they redid that so it feels a little bit more stable. But <laughs> it, it's an incredible environment. And for all the fans that are going to be out here uh, visiting from Ann Arbor, it was a wonderful time when we went back there a few years ago to Ann Arbor uh, in the big house. And the, the atmosphere and, you know, the 100,000 plus that are in the stands and Mr. Brightside, that was fun. It was incredible. The tunnel. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, game day places that I've been able to visit. Um, but for Washington, it, it certainly is a unique environment um, with the sail gating and, um, you know, the 75,000 people in there that it, it sounds really, really loud. The decibel level is higher than the big house, even though there's 25,000 less fans. It's loud and it gets shaken on third down defense for sure. So it's, um, it's a really fun environment and, you know, the, the Husky fans, hopefully they're all welcoming of the Wolverine fans, and, and it's a great college football Saturday. Well, we're all looking forward to it, and hopefully the game matches the uh, the scenery and the environment. I, after uh, watching both teams, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, everyone is looking forward to it, no doubt about it. It's going to be fun. It gonna is going to be fun, I guarantee that. Here with us today has been Elise Woodward, who's the sideline reporter on the Washington Huskies radio network who has a crazy busy schedule during game week, uh, like most of us I know. So, Elise, I thank you for taking the time to join us and look forward to another visit in the future. No problem. We will uh, have a good game on Saturday and always appreciate you uh, reaching out. Always happy to do it.
On Quick Hits today, at his Monday presser, Sharon said both Will Johnson and Josiah Stewart will be ready for action on Saturday night. Other than that, the team is in pretty good shape for the first road game of the year. On Thursday's Michigan Game Day show, our guest will be beat writer Aaron McMahon from M Live. We'll also hear what Jed Fish had to say at his presser, along with the usual game day notes and a look at the weather for Saturday night. So make sure you join us. That does it for now. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Until we meet again on Thursday, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!